Hey, how's it going? Z-Man the Tech here, and I want to thank you for tuning into Good Talk HQ. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Arzette, the Jewel of Faramore for Nintendo Switch. It was developed by CDI Software and published by Limited Run Games, released February 14th, 2024. It's also available for PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and Steam. And this is an action-adventure platformer with plenty of exploration and secrets to find. In fact, this game is riddled with them, and they're all worth the effort. The story, in a brief synopsis, is that the Kingdom of Faramore, after many years of peace and prosperity, was challenged by the Demon King Dimer and his army of evil, who had planned to conquer the land and plunge it into eternal darkness. Because, well, quite literally, he was opposed to this idea of peace. Driven by greed and power, there were several individuals that devoted themselves to the cause of the Demon King, and many long wars ensued. In an act of desperation, the King of Faramore directed an assault on Dimer's lair, and ultimately the Demon King was bested and imprisoned within the Book of Okrin with the powers from the Jewel of Faramore at the hands of Princess Arzette. When this happened, the Jewel of Faramore shattered and dispersed across the land. And now, after ten years of peace, the Demon King was released after those jewel shards were recovered by one of his servants. And, you know, revenge is on the menu. As far as the gameplay, you assume the role of Princess Arzette, who specializes in swordplay and magic. This is a solid and very responsive 2D platformer with a plethora of abilities you obtain as you play through it, which opens it up in the middle to late game. It's very interesting the way the game is put together. It has similar characteristics of a Metroidvania, in the aspect of needing to backtrack to previous areas after finding and unlocking new abilities. However, the areas aren't interconnected like a Metroidvania game would be. They're sectioned off by individual levels, so I can't really label it as such a genre, though the system really works well for what it is. Very clever game design nonetheless. Jumping gravity feels smooth and accurate, and the melee combat feels very clean too. You have the ability to block enemy projectiles by attacking at the right moment before being hit, and also with a special ability that you earn later as you play through. That same special ability sees an additional upgrade later in the game that allows you to deflect projectiles back to the sender while blocking too. You can eventually shoot magic blasts that can destroy various types of blocks that stand in your way throughout the levels. They can also be used to shoot enemies too, some of which require a specific type of magic, so pay attention to their color. Double jumping is another ability you'll gain mid-game that could be quite pivotal to your success in finding secrets and of course reaching areas that you couldn't early in the game. So don't feel discouraged when you see so many things out of reach. You'll be doing quite a bit of backtracking, trust me on this. There are a slew of abilities just waiting for you to find them, so I won't spoil them all. One point of advice, do the side quests, you won't regret it. Some are actually required for you to progress too, so make it a point to address them as they present themselves to you. Plus, the dialogue with the NPCs is pretty great. Trust me, it's all worth it. There's a casual mode, and a normal mode that you can choose from before you start the game. Overall, the game itself is pretty accessible when it comes to difficulty, and it's fairly straightforward to play through. Exploration is heavily encouraged. As far as the controls, as mentioned prior, the level of responsiveness and accuracy are very commendable. Collisions with the floors and walls are perfect and feel right at home in this 2D platformer, and that's just what we want to see. No hindrances whatsoever. You have the flexibility to use left analog stick or directional pad for movement, which is always a plus. And in fact, I found myself switching between the two here and there. As far as the face buttons, you jump with B, swing your sword with Y, shoot your magic with A, use inventory items with X, block with the left shoulder or trigger, and select magic color with right shoulder or trigger. The controller mapping makes sense and nothing feels uncomfortable or out of reach by any means. Considering the style and targeted era that this game aims to capture, the in-game mechanics are right on par. I was considering the thought of being able to shoot magic in multiple directions to be necessary, especially for certain aerial enemies being a nuisance. However, if you could do so, I feel that it takes away from the overall challenge presented in this style of a game. So, I feel it deserves a pardon. Yeah, I'm talking about you, enemies that spawn from the tree stumps. Ugh, frustrating. When it comes to the visuals, this game is a real treat. The character sprites and animations are masterfully detailed and implemented, and they blend very well with the beautifully rendered hand-drawn environments. 
Enemies have a satisfying pop animation to them as they're being dispatched, and there's a clever use of particle effects reminiscent of the targeted era that really helps set the tone and nail it as far as aesthetics go. Now, the real visuals that I wanted to discuss are the choice of using early retro 90s style art and animations within the cutscenes. I got heavy Philips CDI vibes from this, and that's not a bad thing at all. Like, I couldn't stop thinking about Zelda Wand of Gamelon. So nostalgic, man. <laughs> they freaking nailed it. Kudos to the art and animation team. They truly get it. As far as the sound design, the devs once again exceeded expectations with an accurate level of quality and attention to detail within this department too. Audio levels for sound effects, voiceovers, and soundtrack were mixed and mastered perfectly. And let me tell you something. This soundtrack. Oh my god, this soundtrack. Jake Silverman was up in that studio putting in work. It was so masterful, it's difficult for me to put it into words. The use of MIDI instrumentation here is spot on to the subject matter, and there honestly couldn't be a better fit for these compositions. I aspire to reach that level of quality with my compositions one day. It was so 90s, and I absolutely adore it. So, in conclusion, if you're looking for a nostalgic explorative 2D platformer that oozes with 90s flair, charm, and lots of witty dry humor, I can most definitely recommend RZ The Jewel of Faramore. And even if you're not particularly part of the target audience, I feel that there's still a really good time to be had with this title. The gameplay is straightforward and relatively easy to get the hang of, the cutscenes are fully voiced and narrated, and the game is riddled with lore and secrets. I was very much interested in learning more about the land of Faramore, getting to know all of its inhabitants, and fulfilling all their side quests to see what abilities I could gain, and more or less, I was interested to see what happens after 100% completion of the game. The art direction is a major highlight, and again, I must reiterate that the soundtrack is top tier, and I thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. And with that being said, my final score for RZ The Jewel of Faramore is 8 out of 10. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to drop them in the comments down below, and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. And if you like what you saw, please feel free to hit that like button. It helps out a ton with the algorithm to push this content to others like yourself. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more content like this. Have a good one. Take care. Thanks for having me, JP.